Well, good morning once again. Another bright day. We were 35 this morning, kind of on the nippy side, but we're supposed to hit up to the upper 60s, maybe 70 today. Now, I did get the top tier of this uh, little well here put together. I come out after work on occasion. I can get about an hour or so in. So I've got this top layer here, I think right in line with this skid. So I'm gonna hook the pickup over and I wanna put this skid right on top of this end wall here. And then my pipe will go down through that. Then my goal, if everything works out, I got my pickup tied up to the chain. I put the four by four on the back end of the shed. And I'm just gonna kinda of inch it over to where my end of my shed is kind of at the end wall of this little well. Hopefully she works. I'll get her into low range here. See how that looks. Disadvantage of being by yourself. Yeah, it looks like I went just about six inches too far. So I'll just do the reverse. I'll just pull it back a little bit and kind of get this jockeyed in here. About six inches. Huh? Let me just try that. Well, I'm thinking I can kind of live with that. I'd like it just a fuzz under so any moisture wouldn't come in and run in. This should shed a little bit. I think that'll work. Well, from here on out, it's going to be just digging a six foot deep trench down to my, just to the left of the gate here. I'll go down and show you kind of the lineup, what I want to do to this water line to the building. So I think my goal is to bring it right down through this area. I may have to push my wood pile back a little bit, but I want to make a straight shot from there to here. And just across the fence, I have a frost feed hydrant that's going to go down six feet. It'll stick up two feet. And this is the corner where my winter shelter will be. So that's kind of the goal. We'll fire up this tractor and do some backhoe work.
Well, I've been at it for just a little while, maybe an hour and a half or so, and I think I have about, oh, maybe 20, 25 feet. So when I was digging the pit out, I had quite a little bit of leak in, so I did replace these two hoses, which go to my boom cylinder. But I have a hose here. You can see it's all wet. It's been seeping pretty bad. And I was just trying to make do, thinking, well, I'll just trade it out here when I get a moment. But now, this main cylinder here, when I lift this boom up, this is where it really starts to spray. And this is the front pin to the boom cylinder. And right here is access to grease this pin. And this is where it was just spraying out. So I don't know if the hoses went bad. I'm suspecting maybe it's the steel line, but I've got to try to get this out and kind of give that a look-see. In order to get this out, I've got to start it up and retract this ram back up into the cylinder. So I'm suspecting it's the line that goes to this end. There's a steel line that goes up to this end here. Maybe that's the deal, but I've got to retract this up anyway. I'm retracting this up. You can see there's a lot of oil that's coming out of there. Gotta pull pull this back out again. That's part of the game of working with equipment. Well, let's see if we can get this back out of here. That's what's happened. It's been rubbing right there on something. And that's where it wore through. It's not the hose, but it's the line right there. I'll have to take this cylinder to the shop and I'll probably breeze that shut. My guess is why this rubbed is this has been bent right here. So as this goes, bends down, it's going to pull that up. If I pull this up, bend that up, that'll drop that away from whatever's been rubbing. I think that'll help that from happening again. Hold that down and pry this up. That drops that down pretty significant. I think that'll help. Well, good morning. It's been about a week since I've been out here digging with this backhoe. I've kind of had problem after problem after problem. So we did get a little snow over the night, uh, kind of the first taste of winter. We're not really into the cold spell yet, but it's just kind of knocking at the door. I'm going to run to town this morning and get some more parts that I think I've got this thing finally figured out. I'm about halfway, so I'm going to show you just how far I am. Well, I'm kind of thinking I've got about 120 feet to go, and I've probably got about 70, 80 feet done. I've got most of it at six foot. There's a little bit here that I kind of went overboard, and I am about seven foot, but too deep is better than not deep enough. What I'm trying to do is head down just past that fence line. That's where I want to put a frost free. So hopefully here we're supposed to have a week of about 50s, maybe upper 40s. I'm hoping I can get this done.
I do finally have my trench dug. And in the scope of this video from your perspective, I'd say, oh, it didn't take very long. Actually, that's not quite true. It took me the last two weeks. I've been fighting little things that um, kept showing up on this backhoe. So overall, I'm about 130 feet from this water tank shed down to this point. I came just across this fence line and so I'll have my frost free hydrant here so I can be able to water, sock water just right across the fence and then next summer I may just go on from here. But this was my goal this winter, before winter came, was to get to this point. Now more about why it took me so long to do this. Let me show you something that I, I went to school and this is called the School of Hard Knocks. So when I had the leak on the steel line to the cylinder that runs this boom, I took it down and brazed it and brass doesn't have the pressure resistance that steel does. I was hoping it was just going to get me by and it did for a while. The other end of that steel line also broke from the cylinder tube. Now I tried to weld that multiple times. In fact, I think it came down to about nine or ten times. And I could not get that rascal to quit leaking. So I finally took it all apart, re-welded it. That didn't work. And in the process of that, I blew a hole in the line. So I did take it to AIH machine in Billings and they put a new line on for me and that got that problem solved. But there was another problem. Well in my going to school I, I learned about hydraulics to this degree that I did. This is my tank, it's a five gallon tank and everybody told me that I wanted to put the filter in the return line. So I did. I put it in the return line to the pump. And a number of you who are familiar with hydraulics recognize the cavitation that I had. So I first initially thought it was air in the system, and it was not. It was the restriction of the filter to the pump that was causing the cavitation, which is a starvation of fluid to the pump. So I looked and I looked and I talked and, you know, yep, filter in the return line, filter in the return line. What it finally dawned on me was the filter goes in the return line to the reservoir, not the pump. And so that was one thing that was causing cavitation. I think maybe that was part of the problem, but I now know it was not all of the problem. In a conversation that I had at the hydraulic shop in Billings, Womack, Dan there just happened to mention, you know, if you ever get one of these tanks that have a little screen in the outlet, you want to get rid of that screen. I didn't realize I had a screen right here in this outlet. But I took the filter off and there was, uh, there was hardly any flow at all. It was about a pencil sized stream out of an inch and a half outlet. And I, something is wrong. I took all this assembly off and I had just a trickle out of this. That screen had plugged up and was the major cause of my starving the pump, hence my cavitation. So, just a heads up, these are tractor supply tanks. You know, they're really popular. It has worked, but I had to get rid of that screen. And I had to move my filter to the return line to the reservoir, not the return line to the pump. Now I understand the line that goes to the pump is called the suction line. It is not called the return line. This is the school of hard knocks, but now I understand. So now I have a, a open ball valve. Your inch and a half is reduced down to one inch, actually return line, suction line. It'll take it, it feeds the pump, the, the backhoe worked well, problem solved on the cavitation. So this is something that I have done over and over and over and over in the wagon shop. I have learned from the school of hard knocks. And I don't mind doing that because when it costs me something and something doesn't work, it makes it stick. 
now with what I've gone through, this has been a two week process of working the kinks out of all this. Now I understand better than I did before how the hydraulic system works. So now we are operating, we're operating pretty well. I got this trench dug, it's six feet deep, 130 feet long. Now I need to lay the line and I feel like we're gonna make some progress. We actually have about three days of decent weather before snow is supposed to start to come. So I'm kind of pushing it, but I am hopeful that we're gonna make it. So anyway, the, the trenching isn't all that exciting. It's exciting to me because I got this old kind of castaway backhoe working again. Um, so I like that, but it's been a long process. So tuition paid at my school of hard knocks these last two weeks. Anyway, thanks for following along.